All right, folks, we are back. Uh, that is Phil, Andrew, and Colton uh, playing the analytical run of Amnesia, a machine for pigs. Uh, during the break, we did look up the translation of the poem that was used, but couldn't really make much of it. Aside from... Was it just me or that door gen- almost sounded like it was burping? Uh, it kind of got slammed in my face. And then... Uh, shaken a bit. Yes, there's a very strange sound that came after it when it was being slammed in your face. So I believe the last thing I did was I turned that other switch. I am off the market. I will cry all the way home. I will have none. I, will I think have that's none a good sign. At all. Yeah. Uh, Mandis just had a mumble to himself for a flashback, but it's pretty obvious. Uh, this little piggy. Machine for pigs. So this little piggy this comes long with the New World Order. Yeah, and this little piggy had none. That's really cool. It's coming. Come on, Daddy. It's this way. This is an interesting take on Animal Farm. Can we get a better look at those engines from up here, or, or are we really only seeing brass? Uh, yeah. Brass and pipe. Ah, well. Yeah, just pipes. We'll have to go deeper to see more, I suspect. Yeah, the, the machine is, is utterly massive, and you kind of got a sense of it in that opening sequence where you uh, saw the red lights and stuff. Didn't tell us a whole lot, though. Yeah. Some squealing pig sounds. All right. Now I don't know if this is being ahead of myself a little bit. Yes. An egg, a stone egg. So this might be getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I'm pretty sure uh, the stone egg is a reference to the, uh, the orb that was um, the, the major plot device. Major MacGuffin in uh in the Dark Descent. That would make pretty for a good possibility. Interesting family. Yeah. Uh, June third, eighteen ninety nine. So this is near the first note we found. I realize now that my fear of dirt stems from the disease I contracted climbing those lost jungle temples. It is if those clean places so free of humanity's filth imprinted upon my soul and left it fragile to what I find here. Very interesting that he's calling the jungle clean. Uh, fear I is suppose they're talking clean in the spiritual sense, or natural sense, but... Right. Again, that would play into the whole mechanization versus natural. Behold, harkening back to the noble savage... Alright, so this next bit is, uh, fear is what keeps us all in our places, I find, er, fear is what keeps us all in our places, and the fear of the flesh, the ruin of the flesh is the greatest of them all, I am sickened, I am ruined, 
but I will build such machines to contain this plague and heal us all. A new century is upon us. Is he trying to liberate people from flesh? Very Hellraiser. Very transhumanist. Very transhumanist. Come on, slow coach. It's this way. Yeah, this is just him. The shaking ground you feel is our attempt to clear the flood waters. Treachery, Mandas. We were undone. Your children are trapped by this act. You must find them before it is too late. What do you need me to do? How can I find them? Always deeper, Mandas. Through the piston room and into the tunnels, then find the bilge and flush the rotten water. I will help you where I can, but you must be swift, my little friend. All right. Rishi, your children, would you kindly? Oh, not <laughs> that again. It has some very similar overtones in the communication method and the general co construction of the dialogue. And the trustworthiness, too. to note that I need to fix the fuse. Which of course you did with your bare hands, because you know, nothing like an electric arc in the morning. Yeah. How convenient, another fuse. Yeah, I don't think there's really one involved here though. How unlike a game. Puzzles are actually pretty rudimentary. legs about me. Damn this wretched soul. I am given birth to nothing but machinery. Okay. Was there a note on the table back there? Uh, yeah, there was. I'm heading back that direction, though, so... There's a note here. So let's read this. August 19th, 1899. Uh, von Reichenbach 
writes of Odic Force, whilst that ignorant charlatan Blavatsky pontificated upon the soul. They are both Cretans. To think one could strive for such heights without wading first through puke and innard, without standing upon an architecture of bones. Montezuma was the wiser, but here in our temples of steel, I have witnessed the severed head of a man recently trampled to death by a runaway carriage, immersed in a solution of the Brennenberg compound, open his eyes, and cry, Oh, where are my legs, sir? Where is my body? We are breaking through the barriers of death itself, oh my dar dead darling Lily. It is too late for you, but I promise you this, I will save our children from death. And if need be, I will wrench them back from the blackness with this wonderful concoction. So there's another um, Southern Central American reference, and Brennenberg is the setting of the first game. That's what I thought. There's a baddie. And he vanished. So, an interesting side note is that Odenic Force mentioned the prior note is noted yeah. that the people who were testing for it were renowned for only being able to work in either near or total darkness in order to sense it. As another one of these vital life force type experiment explanations. Interesting. That makes kind of sense too, because uh, the the Brandenburg thing, Alexander was always working on making Vitae or Vitae or something like that, which was some sort of life energy essence that he distilled from people while they were being tortured. So, um, yep, going back to the first game there a little bit. Definitely touching on that. Yeah. Well, especially when considering the major themes of darkness and the spirits within the dark in that first one. It's interesting that they actually did bring up the Odenic Force there. Well, uh, this was interesting since this note um, saying this is part of a much larger complex, no easy route for, me, route for me then. I will follow my fever, the calls of my children wherever they may lead me as I move further into this strange empire. So, empire is kind of interesting and follow my fever. Well, look at the beginning. That first note was mentioning a fever dream as a title, so... Yeah, yeah. Like, it starts with the fever dream, and also... He's been going deeper and deeper into the machine because... The phone tells me to. Follow us, Papa. We know the way. Well, and your children keep telling you to. That too, or but... Something that, that claims to be your children anyways. Yeah. But the guy on the phone has been like... Your children are trapped down here. That's also they don't an interesting disconnect. Have much trouble telling you to come. Yeah, that's also an inter interesting disconnect because we've been seeing them around yeah, corners. We never see more than a glimpse or two of them. Yeah, it's been also. Hold still, child. Don't let it get into your eyes. I'm going to rinse it out now. There, it will be fine. You just need to lie down. Keenock, look to your brother. How many times have I told you not to play in the cellar? Interesting. Right, so one of them got hurt. But yeah, like, like you see them and you always hear them, so it's not like they're trapped that deep and they keep seeming to move or else you can find them. But the guy well, with the, the amount of um, mad science grade mutagen that's implied to be here. Your chil the children could easily be trapped and still able to wander around. You know, their ghosts or spirits or whatever. Astral projection or something? Extraordinary. Quite extraordinary. And you Not plausible. Go? Good God, man. You have been busy. It is wonderful how tragedy focuses the mind. What else was I to do? Fall into grief, pine, and fade in my hopelessness? 
Why not then simply die in that jungle amongst those dead temples? And the uh, the gramophones are all um, seem to be that visit from Professor A. who apparently is now getting a tour of the machine. This is like some Victorian era decompression, decontamination chamber or something. Welcome to Rapture? It's weird. Noticing that this is also the, uh, the chamber from the beginning of the game, from the menu. And it's like, poof, we're in a house again. Are here. <laughs> Doesn't look like we're getting any goodies out of that desk. Marketing is a voting screen. Huzzah. Exciting. The collar, the neck, the noose. Two cups of flour, one cup of water, a pinch of salt, a handful of mints, a bay leaf, an herb, a skeleton key for the nursery, and a mixin' will go together. I've noticed that too, that some weird glitch of the uh, rendering engine that the loading screens don't show up in the capture. No, they don't. I've been wondering about that, where you've been reading these things from. Yet yeah, you see a little bit of the screen right before it fades. I have such visions to share with thee, yet my jaw be unshackled, and you harvest the crust from my eyes. They can be clean like this. That was interestingly cryptic. That doesn't appear to have been obviously telling you where to go. Weird. Yeah. All the suggestions are a large workforce, yet no actual signs of life is every bit as if someone has attempted to carefully create the illusion of a working factory complex. And if this facade would examine closely is clearly just a falsification. I must put aside my anxieties, quell the unease that pits my stomach, and continue on my path. It's weird that he would write that down, considering this is supposed to be his factory. That is one of the immersion-breaking things here. The fact that, well, this is your factory, isn't it? I think it's supposed to be. I mean, we... You'd think you know it a little bit better than this. But he's talking about its creator almost as if it's a separate person. Is he losing his mind, or...? In a different mind? That would be interesting. Another back bathroom.
that that bit of the soundtrack is gloriously creepy. Uh, October eleventh, eighteen ninety-nine. We integrate the very latest knowledge of chemistry using low levels of laudanum derivative in the feed to subdue the product. Even before the initiation of the process, this means that when we drag them from the holding pens onto the line, they are less likely to panic and damage machine components, other products, or themselves. This section of belt is sheathed in rubber and kept well lit to maintain good spirits, and we have actually found that the intelligent placement of gramophones and simple acoustic amplification tubes around a line means we can use music to further soothe the product. We find WC particularly effective in this regard. So, yeah, it, it's the meat plant. But WC, really? Pigs, so they, to they, call they, them pigs? Yeah, apparently. I would not have suspected WC in that case. I don't know, I was never a fan of Impressionist composers to begin with. They have their place, but for the most part their work is Ooh, a, a little boring. Pleasant. Pigs. Appears to be some kind of fueling station. The smell here is all wrong. This is not petroleum. And this suggests to me that this machine may be, must be significant in some way. That last phone call from the dude was really weird. He was like, he's been telling you to go and clean and like fix the machine. And then he's all like, make me clean. Well, in case there was any doubt whatsoever, he's probably not to be trusted given his inconsistencies. Remember the first phone call? Oh, there's a note to your right. Yeah. September 28th, 1899. Imagine, they say, a machine that one day might think like a man. As if this is to be desired, one might boast of creating a man who breathes like a pig. Men and women upon all fours, rutting carelessly, ejaculating their filthy little missives into the streets, alleys, and gutters, running freely with the careless spill of their conjoinings, the air thick with the whimperings of lust, bodies streaked with their own emissions, we have created a world where man is so utterly debased, he will spray his seed over passers-by, and yet this is the condition Babbage aspired to. No, this is not the machine we seek, such an entity should be nothing less than a deity, and we would fall upon our knees and worship it, we shall not carve gods to bicker and fornicate, they will exist to clean the world and set us free. I reject Babbage as I reject these men of government. Let the pigs copulate in the gutters whilst they can. We shall scoop them up and ease their ascension soon enough. Now that's got some interesting sentiments in it. I swear I've heard of that those exact words from the Singularity Institute sometimes. So, fun fact, in 1899... W.C. married a woman who went by the nickname Lily. That is a fun fact. Uh, I wonder let's if, go. if that helped influence their saying. choice of composer. Uh, maybe. Composer or, or the name of the character. I'm not sure which direction they worked that one from. My outdoors. Um... Let's give that note one final pass, and then uh, call this installment. So, 
this guy is saying that creating a machine that thinks like a man is like bringing a man down to the level of a pig. So machines are higher than men, so if we made a machine, we should make a machine god. All hail the Omni Messiah. Yeah. That's a pretty common science fiction trope. It's kind of interesting, so... Maybe that's the machine. Maybe man just attempted to make godlike AI. Alright. We'll think more on that and come back soon with more A Machine for Pigs. Mm -hmm.